Are you sure Catherine doesn't wear a mask? Video analysis. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Yesterday, I published a video asking the question, is this Catherine's mask slipping? The reason being, of course, that those that identify with being with the Sussex squad had found a piece of footage suggesting that it was her mask slipping. Well, we only saw a snippet. And, of course, as many of you pointed out to me, that this was taken from Royal Ascot that had taken place recently. And you provided your various views upon what Catherine was actually saying, and also in terms of what you believed was actually going on. I pointed out, of course, that this mere snippet did not of itself confirm that she operates with a mask. One cannot make a determination from one behaviour alone. As I make it repeatedly clear, one has to look at a range of behaviours over an elongated period of time. Certain behaviours are no more than indicators, and many behaviours can be committed by narcissists and non-narcissists alike, but the driver behind those behaviours is different depending upon what that person is. And I've given you various examples in that regard. I have enabled you to understand the different drivers between an empathic person, a normal person, a narcissistic person, and a narcissist, because there are those different drivers. With Catherine, I have explained that previous behaviours don't support that she does operate with a mask and that it would appear that it is the grasping at straws by the sugars and members of the Sussex squad in an attempt to smear Catherine. But as always, I like to investigate further, and therefore I now present to you an elongated version of the footage from which I provided you with a short clip yesterday. By placing the short clip in greater context, and indeed, it took, did take place at Ascot only the other week, you will be able to understand more in terms of not only understanding what Catherine is, but also by placing it in a context to understand the process of making a determination about an individual. So, let's get to the actual footage, the elongated clip, which I'm just going to let you watch in its entirety first, before I provide you with my analysis and breakdown. Now, let us look at the footage again, and I'll provide my commentary on it as we go along. Here comes Catherine with William and two other people in an open-top horse-ridden carriage, looking around, a little wave there and a smile, all very pleasant. And we're looking happy and a strong breezy day in the sunshine. Now, stood amongst the crowd and Catherine chatting away to somebody taking an interest. Crowd looking on. Oh, look, there are the Cambridges. She's gripping onto the hat. 
holding on to it, ensuring that it doesn't blow away. She's talking to a gentleman with a top hat facing her, talking in quite animated fashion. William there, got any good betting tips for me? He's asking. I'm walking along together. Note the absence of a grip of doom. Notice there's no man handling, clawing, physical assertion of control. So they're strolling along, both looking dapper and elegant. Bree's making his presence known as Catherine grips the hat a couple of times, walks over to a group, and now she's talking to Top Hat Man. Yes, yes, chatty chat, chat, listening away. Excellent listener as she is, being personable and polite, and then she's been called away by somebody, probably William, and then there's a mutter under her breath, slight grimace, and she's away smiling again. Walking away with William and another man in the top hat, saying, come this way, darling. I know there are some excellent betting tips to be found just around here. And actually, he's going to take her for a little bit of a back scuttler away from the crowd. William, you old devil. Now, <clears throat> having watched all of that, it allows us, of course, to put what we saw in not only the context of the day, but also in terms of understanding Catherine's behaviour. What has been done here is that a simple grimace, a fleeting expression that occurred by Catherine, was taken out of context and to demonstrate that she's not a very nice person. And this was done motivated by the envy of the Sugar Squad, the Sussex Squad, the Sugars, whatever you want to call them, those dim-witted, knee-jerking, paid-for-hire clowns that not only blindly support the activities of Harry's wife, but also engrave, engage in unpleasant and denigrating behaviour towards other members of the royal family, particularly the Cambridges and especially Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. And so what they've sought to do is take a moment where she appears to express dissatisfaction with the situation and make it seem that that's her having a mask-slipping moment. This, of course, is pathetic. It demonstrates, of course, that the sugars don't understand narcissism. If they did, they would see it rampant in their mistress. But it also means that if they think that this is a mask slipping, it demonstrates they don't understand narcissism. The reason that they think that this is the mask slipping is that, of course, videos such as my own have identified the repeated occasions where the facade, the mask, of Harry's wife has fallen to one side as we've seen the fracturing of her facade. We have seen the grip of doom. We have seen the clenched jaw. We've seen the death stare, as I've made apparent on numerous, occasion, numerous occasions. These aren't one-offs. They happen frequently. And, of course, those are set in the context of having analysed Harry's wife's behaviour to ascertain precisely what she is. And, therefore, we look at those behaviours through the lens of what she is and interpret them in accordance with her narcissism. With Catherine, there is no evidence to support that she's a narcissist. Indeed, there is evidence that demonstrates that she's empathic, that she repeatedly behaves in a manner whereby... She's an excellent listener, she's compassionate, she's caring, she exhibits a strong moral compass. She doesn't operate a facade in the way that a narcissist does. Sure, she has narcissistic traits like everybody else does, but they're largely kept in check by her empathic traits. There'll be occasions where she'll lose her temper, there'll be occasions where she's irritable, there'll be occasions where she's argumentative and perhaps will also show off as her narcissistic traits come to the fore, but she's not a narcissist. And therefore... Because we know from the mass of evidence that shows her behaviour over, over an elongated period of time that she's not a narcissist, this enables us to interpret this behaviour through the appropriate lens, namely that of a non-narcissist. And as I explained in the companion piece to this video, empathic people are not saints and they get irritated, they experience moments of displeasure, distaste, annoyance and so forth. And when we expand the video, we can also see that either side of it, Kate was enjoying in a pleasant conversation, and that the momentary displeasure that she expressed was nothing to do with the situation that she found herself in. Nobody interrupted her in the sense of 
suddenly caused her to have to stop speaking. She was called away and she turned. But her response was not that of ignited fury. It was not that of a response to a threat to control. It wasn't, for instance, the reaction we saw when Harry's wife's mother interrupted her when she was speaking at the Grenfell event some moons ago, and we saw that death stare. It wasn't the same vein where we have seen at the walkabout outside of one of the church services where Harry's wife was staring again using the death stare towards Catherine. Because Catherine's an empathic individual, we are able to interpret this behaviour through that lens and also within the context of the day, which ultimately shows that she was probably expressing dissatisfaction to the person that she was talking about with regard to the wind and the fact that he was trying to take the satellite dish off her head. She wasn't being unpleasant towards the man that she was speaking to. After all, we could see that they were enjoying a jovial and pleasant conversation with one another. And then when she walked away, there was no continuation of irritation, there was no grabbing of William, there was no hissed response to him about the man that she's been speaking to. She continued smiling. So both context and understanding what she is enables us to make the interpretation of what's going on and to confirm, for sure, that she doesn't operate with a mask. So any sugars that have come here expecting to see that there is a mask well, you're going to leave in disappointment. And as for the rest of you, it reaffirms the point that Catherine does not operate with a mask. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.